Cricket time now on the Sports Max Zone. In just over half an hour, West Indies women will march into battle with host Australia in the second One Day International in Melbourne. The Windies will be on the hunt to level the series after suffering a heavy eight wicket defeat in the first match on Sunday without skipper Haley Matthews, whose fitness is still in question. The action will be live on Sports Max immediately after the Sports Max Zone. And joining us this afternoon to preview this match on his birthday is cricket commentator Nikhil Utam Chandani. Good afternoon and happy, happy birthday. We're sending you a lot of love and good wishes. Thank you so much, Maria. Thank you to the Sports Zone team and happy to be here. All right, so let's get to business. Um, birthday celebrations will be after. The West Indies woman, Nikhil, not a good start to their ODI stint. And of course, to me, we would have described it as embarrassing because they were unable to battle their 50 overs and of course struggled greatly without skipper Haley Matthews. So first question, since you're around the cricket a lot, any information as to if Haley will play? Well, I know that they've kept it very quiet in terms of uh, her status, and rightfully so, it's in terms of her illness, so no. Uh, I haven't heard anything about it. We may have to ask your sister, Maria, who I know is in Australia. Um, but in terms of whether she plays or not, I think I've looked past the results for this series. The way that they batted in the T20 series was remarkable. Obviously, Haley Matthews on screen was the key uh, reason for that. But I think I have sort of used this series to look past the results and more and have a look at the exposure that I think a team in transition can gain. I look at that young opening partnership of Zeta James and Janaba Joseph. First time the West Indies have ever opened with two players under 20 years old, I think in the last six years. Um, so it's a big transition, a big step up in Australia. Let's be very frank, are one of the world's best teams um, in, in all formats. So I think I look at it from the point of view of the exposure that those two youngsters at the top of the order, order can get. But also almost on a wake up call for just to show how much the West Indies rely on Hayley Matthews and also that someone else in that top order, whether it's Richard Williams, uh, whether it's Shemaine Campbell, who's vice-captain, Stephanie Taylor still battling her way back from injury. But someone else is going to have to put their hand up. And I think it's a great opportunity if Hayley Matthews doesn't play today uh, for someone else to do that. Yeah, you speak about looking at it. I agree it is a reality check. And the reality, the reality check was extremely bitter because we all saw it on our screens. For me, though, Nikhil, what worries me is that, of course, these youngsters, despite getting the opportunity... They are supposed to be able to bat. And I think not having Haley Matthews in the setup, of course, intimidated these batters. And for me, it's a cause of concern because when I look at the scores, it's scores of zero, single digits, Nikhil. And these, as much as they're young, they have been trained and they're professional. And we would expect better figures, at least not zero and one and two. One of the stats that came out of the first ODI was that the first run actually came after the fifth over. And I think that's a massive cause of concern. People might start asking what really happens in batting practice. Yeah, I actually was watching the game live. I saw that. Um, I think for me, it was a bit understandable given that the two youngsters uh, were out there, but also facing a really good spell of bowling. Uh, Kim Garth, uh, shot was swinging the ball a lot so it was challenging but of course we would like them to see a bit more of that rotation but you could understand a bit of nerves there you know away from home in Australia things would have been slightly challenging and actually during this period Hayley Matthews was on the mic uh, doing an interview and she actually expressed that she didn't mind they didn't mind their two young openers seeing off that first power play seeing off the new ball Zeta James with a valiant effort but just two from 27 as you mentioned is kind of disappointing I think I would look past the two openers. I put the onus on Rashada Williams, who has shown us time and time again that she can show up against big opposition. In that England series, the T20 International Series last year, she was the West Indies' best batter. I wonder if they can maybe tinker with moving her up the order from number three to opening the batting in place of one of the teenagers because Williams has done it 14 times in her one international career and she's got a half century in that position. So I think... Maybe it can help with that scoring ability in the power play, which we know is so vital. But of course, the biggest hope is that Hayley Matthews can be there just to set the tone. Because I think we all have seen the influence that she can have on that entire 11 
players in the T20 International Series, the West Indies look like a different side um, to <laughs> see Stefani Taylor able to play herself in and be able to start slowly 10 from 20 and then finish with a 60 or 70 from just 50 odd deliveries. It was great to see. But again, we need to find others who can step up. And it is a transitionary period, and this exposure will be very good for those younger players especially. Yeah, really a great team when Haley Matthews is able to step up and deliver with the bat. Now about the bowlers, Nikhil. We didn't get to see a lot of them because it wasn't much runs to defend. Do you feel sometimes that the Windies bowlers are at such a disadvantage when they don't have a proper total to defend? Yeah, it's unfortunate. I would have loved to see, especially the way Chanel Henry began Mariah, I think, even going back to the CPL, she has made drastic strides in her all-around cricket. I wouldn't be surprised if she gets picked up in these franchise leagues, the women's IPL next year, because she really is that X-factor cricketer, can come in at the back end, strike the big sixes, uh, but also with the new ball, is showing us something else. The way she swung the ball away from the right-handers, both four overs, three of them were dots. 18 dot balls she bowled in that spell. So it is unfortunate they didn't have more runs to play with. More, uh, sorry, not more. Uh, Karishma Ramarat. <laughs> Uh, from the World Cup has been special with her finger spin, especially in tough conditions in Australia. So I think there are a lot of positives to take. Um, as you said, it's kind of unfortunate that they haven't had much to defend. But let's hope today that, you know, they can set a good total if they bat first. And then we can really see a test for the bowlers. Alia Alin is another young prospect in terms of her seam bowling who has that bit of extra pace that can be uh, an X factor for the West Indies bowling lineup as well. Yeah, Nikhil, you touched on it just now because uh, I uh, had some question marks about their decision to use the 18-year-old Zeta James and the 19-year-old Janaba Joseph to open the batting against such a, a high-quality uh, Australian opening attack. Um, at the moment, we aren't sure if Haley will play tonight. Um, would you be surprised if Haley doesn't play tonight that they go back with the two teenage openers? Because it, it was a, a failed experiment. I understand giving the young players the opportunity, but... It, it just appeared to be too much for them, really. Yeah, I mean, to be honest, Lance, I was quite surprised at first. But again, then I reminded myself, this is a brand new coaching staff for the women. Sean Ditz, I guess, maybe wanting to see the right combinations, test his players in different ways. But I think I would agree with you in terms of the fact that you have Rashada Williams in the side, who has opened the batting alongside Haley Matthews 14 times. She's shown against South Africa in that series last year that she got a half century. And she's capable of, of batting against the new ball and also maximizing the two fielders outside the circle. I personally would have started with her. And you almost ease, even if you want Zayla James to open the batting, you can almost ease a Janaba Joseph in against the spin in the middle overs if the openers get off. And it could be a lot better in terms of a transition to this international stage for them. Because let's be real, the jump from the CPL to the international setup and facing the Australian quality is a huge difference and a huge step up. So I do expect them to make a change if Haley's not available. But I can understand the new head coach in trying to test his players and see them go about things a bit differently. Because I think the way that Haley Matthews in that T20 series has come out batting is unlocked a new level. I remember last year on the previous tutelage, very cautious, trying to bat through the 20 overs because she knows her importance. In those three T20s, it just looked like she was business from ball one and it worked. Yeah, and I mean, I know you mentioned Rashada Williams and I, and I, I, I get that and I agree with you. But given the lack of experience of the two teenagers, even Shemaine Campbell or Stefani Taylor, to me, could have been options to open the batting um, if it is that you're stuck with these inexperienced players to shoulder the responsibility of a, a fast bowling attack for the Aussies that is like the best in the world. Yeah, and there's uh, even been indications in the past that many believe, Lance, that Chanel Henry, who we've seen strike the ball at the back end of the innings, can almost come to the top order. And because the West Indies have struggled in 50 over cricket in the first 10 overs so badly, you never know if she comes in and gets you a 12 or 15 ball, 30, that could really set the tone striking at 200. So I think there are a few options that they can use. I just find the biggest area of improvement needs to be able to bat that 50 overs. And Australia, England, India, the best bowling attacks in the world will present the biggest challenge for the West Indies women. I think in these two matches, whether they bat first or chase, I think they should be looking to maximize those 50 overs and at least get to 200, 220. Because let's be real, in the one international format, it's Haley Matthews or nothing. She averages 40 in wins and just 20 in the games that they've lost. So they depend on her so heavily. I hope if she comes back and she gets a total at a ground that she's very familiar at the Junction Oval in Melbourne, 
I hope that others can bat around her and the West Indies can face all 300 deliveries. Yeah, and remember that the Aussies aren't even using Elise Perry as a bowler because uh, the all-rounder has an injury and she's just playing right now as a, as a batter. But there was a Cricket West Indies release today, um, Nicola, that I'm pretty sure you would have seen about a West Indies A-team to tour Pakistan. And uh, Rashada Williams has been named captain of that team. And a lot of the younger players uh, who have made brief appearances for the the, 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 the West Indies team proper are in this setup. And this, I think, is a glorious opportunity to sort of bridge the gap with these A-team players to get themselves some international experience and, um, you know, some, some, some boost in their preparation for the bigger assignments against the best teams in the world. Yeah, most definitely, Lance. I think in both the men's and women's game, we've been crying out for more A-team tours. I understand the logistical challenge of planning them, but to see young Trishan Holder or even a Kiana Joseph who's done well in the T20 circuit in the last two CPLs, Ashmini Munasar, who obviously led the West Indies in the 19 World Cup, because they can't get that exposure at uh, the level of an international game because you have the Haley Matthews, etc. I think this tour, not only for the fact that they're playing cricket, but I would say playing cricket in foreign conditions will be a huge boost for a lot of those youngsters who have only had the one trip to South Africa for that on the 19 World Cup. And you never know. It's another opportunity as well to discover a few gems. I think Kiana Joseph is one to watch. She continues to work on her fitness, and she's continuing to bowl well and offer something different with her left arm spin. I'll be very eager to see how she goes in subcontinent conditions. Uh, spin friendly. Trishan Holder seems like a good player of spin. She uses her feet well. Again, good test for her, and also good that the coaching staff is the international coaching staff. So they'll bring that experience, but also be able to keep a close eye on those young prospects and see who is that next 2024 2025 group that can carry us into those world cups because it is a changing of the guard and it is a transitionary period for the west indies women yeah and as we get ready to wrap this segment nikhil just a quick comment on what you saw from natasha mclean at the cpl and are you surprised of that she has not been included at all well obviously the cpl was a very small sample size maria but i think what she did was impressive we can't make any mistake about that the way that she came in and struck the ball, you don't tend to see that often in the women's game. And a few of, like Sophie Devine and a few of the overseas players actually continue to talk about her skill set. So I definitely think that performance has put her sort of in the reckoning of the selectors. The only issue is that we don't have that much domestic cricket. But when we do have the regional T20 Blaze or the regional 50 over competition for the women, that is a perfect opportunity for Natasha McLean to work hard on her game now and then come there and show that she has the consistency and also repetition. But if I look across the 20 players in that West Indies women's side, I don't see anyone that offers a skill set, maybe a Chanel Henry and obviously Hayley Matthews, but someone that comes in and can go from ball one, it's, a more, it's such a, a desperate need in T20 cricket when you look around the world in both the men's and women's games at the best teams in the world as well. All right, Nikhil. Well, we have to wrap this one now. I want to thank you so much for joining us on the Sports Max Zone. And it's even special that you took time out of your special day to be with us. Thanks again. Uh, best gift ever. Thank you very much, guys, for having me. All right, Nikhil Udam Chandandi there, of course, our cricket commentator, cricket analyst. Anything you want to know about cricket, Nikhil is the man. Let's take a break.